Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. We're back out on Clear Lake for one more day before I head back home. Fishing with my brother and with my dad today. Come along with us. Like I said, we're on Clear Lake. It's a summer pattern. I think we're going to be throwing top water. We're going to build off what we did a few days ago. We'll see what happens. The other day I had the pleasure of fishing with my friend Ross out here on Clear Lake and I scheduled one more day while we were in town to fish with my dad and brother. So we're back out here on Clear Lake. We're going to try and expand on what we did with Ross, see if we can find more fish up around grass, chase that shallow bite and just have a good time out here. Summer fishing is all about building a pattern and then sticking with it. And it was pretty clear that there were multiple patterns here. You could catch them deep, you could catch them chasing bait, you could catch them on rock. But personally, when I see that shallow water bite, frog bite, buzz bait, spook, I go for that bite. It's just too much fun. So we're at least going to start out that way and then we'll adapt if we have to. Let's get to fishing. It is a matter. What that bubble fan looks like. Huh? Yeah, it went right through us. Dad, turn around and try and catch one out there on the outside of this thing. Right out there. Right here? Yep. Uh, to the right of the otter. Right where the otter be. There he is. Big one. We got me. Whoa. That will do. It's like we're back on Clear Lake or something. Chatterbait. We'll take that one. That's how you start the morning. Beautiful fish. Thank you. That's on that. Green pumpkin shad jackhammer. 5.5 .5 hog farmer spunk shad on the back. You can see I've put some days into that particular bait. It is beat to death. There we go. Fish and grass. Yes, mag fish spinning. Hurrah. That's cool. Careful bringing that over the rail. Did you? Don't forget to show the camera oh. your catch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. What do we got? Yeah. Yeah. Well, morning, Joe. <laughs> We're on the board. <laughs> We're back at Clear Lake. <laughs> oh, you could drive right into that. Should I mark this? It's not a place you really drive. See the top? No, I just mean for future fishing. Because I will forget. Ah. I'll forget that it's here. Hey, buddy. Right through the bottom jaw. Clear Lake is really low right now. Now, not compared to a reservoir. You know, you look at a reservoir and they'll be 20, 50, 100 feet low. Clear Lake's about seven or eight feet low, but this is a very shallow lake. So that seven or eight feet is a huge deal. Probably two thirds of the places that most people fish are completely out of the water. Most of the structure that we fish, the rock piles, the tules, the weed edges, they're all up on the bank. So that fish just came out off the tip top 
of a rock pile that's normally in eight or nine feet of water. And right now it had about this much water on top. Right as the chatterbait came over the top, that fish ate it. You can go right down the edge of it. That's a good fish. Oh, back in the lake. Pulled the hook clean out of that Bobby's rug. Nice fish. When these come out, if you hold on to the hook, actually hold on to the line and just pull that body, it'll go back in there and just flip it over. Good to go, back in action. Probably this rod actually. With this, you can. Yeah! Nice fish. Thanks. That's that smaller frog, huh? We're getting a bunch of short strikes. He went down to that Jackal Kara. Good job. I'm throwing the Bobby's perfect. He's throwing that little Kara. And I was sitting here trying to think something for my dad. He's throwing a toad and it's just not working. So I was sitting here rigging this little swim bait up when that one bit. I think this might work too. Look at that frog down in there. He smashed it. Jeez. Man, that's fun. Right in the corner. Thanks, buddy. All right, so while I'm thinking about it, a couple of quick tips for you guys on frog fishing, because frog fishing is one of those things that you either love or hate. The guys that love it, it is the greatest thing there ever was, and we'll do it all day long just praying for a blow up. But a lot of the people that don't like frogging, it's not that you don't like frogging, it's that you're not successful at it. A lot of people miss bites, lose their fish, don't know where to throw them, that sort of thing. But a couple of huge factors or a couple of things that you can do that will make all the difference in the world. If you're getting frog bites and you're catching those fish, just carry on. 
This is the standard frog that we throw. This is the Bulliwa 2. That's our main frog. Today I'm throwing a snag proof, and I already mentioned this, but sometimes the fish get in a funk. See how we kind of have a haze on us today? It's not as hot as it was when we were out a few days ago, and the fish just seem to be slapping at the frogs. We were missing a bunch of bites. So this is our standard frog. I went to the Bobby's Perfect. It's just a smaller profile. Top to bottom, it's thinner. It's easier for them to get the whole frog in their mouth. My brother is throwing the Kayara. That's this little guy. Way smaller even than the Bobby's. Way, way smaller. And it just takes it to that whole next step. So when those fish are targeting little bait fish or you're getting a lot of bites, but they're just slapping at the frogs, downsizing to a smaller frog will go a really long ways. Now, the other thing that you really want to take into consideration is your rod when you're frogging. Now, this is a travel rod. This is not my normal frog setup because I'm on the road. We flew out here. Uh, and I talked about that a little bit in our last video where I was fishing with Ross. And if you missed that video, I'll link it in the video description for you. But I'm fishing with travel rods where they literally come apart so that I can easily get them on and off the plane and not have to worry about my rods. But normally, I use an X-Pride 7.3 Extra Heavy, and that frog rod is incredible. I use it, Tim uses it, most of our friends use them. That's the rod that will just pound those fish. You can hit them so hard and get them out of the mats when you're frogging. But if you are one of those people that struggles with a frog, if you lose your fish, if you miss your bites, stepping down to a heavy, so we'll step down to that X-Pride 7.2 Heavy or just a seven foot heavy action rod instead of an extra heavy. If you're a smaller framed person, you know, a teenager, uh, just a smaller person overall, uh, most women will fall into this category. Most older individuals will fall into this category. People who don't have quite as much power in their hook set. Uh, if you're one of those people, I mean, you know, if you can smash that hook set, you should be using an extra heavy. But if you can't, if you're worried that you don't quite get enough in them, it's the reverse of what you think. You need to go down to a heavy action rod instead of an extra heavy. The reason why is that if I go to smash a hook set with an extra heavy, once I connect with the fish, that rod doesn't flex much. So if I've got enough momentum, enough horsepower going into it, I'll plant those hooks and I've got them. But for somebody who doesn't set as hard, the give in that heavy, they'll start their hook set, it'll hit the fish, but the rod will continue to flex and it will allow them to continue hitting the fish longer. And you'll actually find that you have a way better hookup ratio on a frog. So that may be what it is that, that you struggle with when you're frog fishing is just the rod that you're using. And then again, dropping down to smaller frogs can make a huge difference as well. The way they're up there on that edge, there's not a lot you can do besides hit them with a frog. Right. You know? If you could run a chatterbait or a square bill or something through there, you'd catch a bunch of them, but they've got a pretty nifty little spot there. Where's my frog? Good one. Jeez, that frog is down there. Nice fish. Very nice fish. Yeah, it's a good fish. Jeez. Oh, 
our camera overheated on the cast. But my brother, quick, grab the other one. Look at this, I'm gonna need flyers. Look at this frog down the throat. Jeez. We're not getting a ton of bites today, but every bite is the right kind. Amazing. Looking a complete other way. He's sick. It's okay, Dad. That's a nice fish. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. That's alright. Let me get a hold of him. Jeez. Yeah. I wasn't even looking, I was looking the other way. That's a shower blows 105. It's no secret how much we like that top water. <laughs> That's why. Just came up and slurped it. What a fish. Awesome. All right guys, we're gonna wrap it up here. It is getting hot. It's the middle of the day, heat of the day, and I think we've just plain had enough. But uh, caught some really nice fish today. It was good to be back on Clear Lake. I'm really glad we were able to make the time on this trip to just take a break and get out here together and catch some fish. I'm glad you guys were able to come along. Like I said before, I'll, leak, I'll link all the baits, the gear. If you watched that other video, I'll link some of that travel gear again that I was using those travel rods as well as some of those traditional frog rods that I was talking about earlier. But if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.